So once Logic is launched, we go to File, New from Template, close and don't save the previous project, and we're gonna choose an empty project. Now that's already selected, so we can go to Choose, or we can double click. And from there, we get our new Tracks dialog window. And um, we can select from here, we can select uh, software, instrument, external MIDI, guitar or bass, drummer or audio. So we're going to have audio. We're going to create one track. And we're going to, we're not recording, so we don't need input monitor. We don't need record enable. And we're not going to open our library. So we're just going to go to create and create one track. Okay, so let's have a look around the interface. At the top here we have the control bar, which we can modify, which I'll demonstrate later on. Over to the left here we have what's called the inspector window, and we can turn that on and off here in the control bar, hitting I, or we can hit I on the keyboard, and that'll turn that on and off. Here we have what's called the tracks area, uh, commonly known as the arrange. In Logic it's called the tracks area, and to the left of that we have our track header um, area here. If I go to um, this function here, I can turn on my quick help menu. So if I get a little bit lost or I'm new to logic, uh, quick help then gives me an indication of uh, what all these functions do as I scroll over them, as you can see. And uh, if I click this icon here, I get an extra set of edit menus um, here, okay? And I can modify that accordingly. Uh, if I turn on auto zoom, as you can see, it auto zooms on the selected track. Now I'm using a laptop, so I can also do that by um, pressing uh, option on my keyboard and using my trackpad. If I scroll up and down, it sc uh, scrolls in, zooms in vertically. And if I go left to right, it zooms in and out horizontally. Back up to the control bar. Here I have my mixer window. Uh, if I click that, I get my mixer window and I can also turn that on and off by hitting X on the keyboard. And over here towards the right, I have my Apple Loops menu and I can click that and turn that on and off. And the shortcut for that is O on the keyboard. I'm now going to start building a track using Apple Loops. So in the Loops window, I have here my keyword buttons and below that the results list. So as I press these keywords, the results are filtered below. And the more keywords I use, then the greater the filtering. To get back to where I was, I press Reset. And I'm looking for a loop called Good Life. So I'm going to use the search field here I'm going to type in good life and we can see here we have three loops called good life. I'm looking for this one called good life beat which I can see is four beats long and has an original tempo of 88 beats per minute. My default project tempo however is 120 beats per minute so it'll mean that this beat will play fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on BPM and I'm going to type in 88 and I'm going to pick up my loop, which I can also preview. That's now playing at the original uh, beats per minute and I can pick that up and drag that into the arrange and say, no, I don't want to import tempo information. And there we have our good life beat. If I was to delete that and put my project BPM back to 120, drag that in and go to don't import project uh, tempo information into project, that then stays at 120 and this will of course play back fast. Let's talk a little bit about project navigation because we need to be able to work very quickly with the software. 
and we can see that we've got transport controls up here so stop play fast forward rewind and record and if we press play then the stop button turns into a go to beginning function so we can go back to beginning but we can also use keyboard shortcuts to navigate the project much quicker now the one thing we've got to remember is with key focus mode and key focus mode is this blue box around here currently around the track area and if I press my tab key I'm going to toggle now between the track area and the loop area so you can see the blue box going from the track area to the loop area and what that essentially does is it gives us the key commands for whichever w window the blue box is around so with the key focus around the um, tracks area I now have the key commands for this area so if I was to press the space bar now that would start the track space bar to stop I press enter or return to go to the beginning of the track that takes me back to the top of the track and I can press space bar and stop and if I don't press enter the space bar then stays where it is and if I press space bar again it will continue to play if I want to skip a bar I use my arrows to the right of the space bar and I click the right arrow to jump a bar you can keep jumping a bar and the left arrow to jump back and if I want to jump four bars I'm going to press O to get rid of the loop window so you can see this and I'm going to press option and use my trackpad to sort of zoom out a little bit I'm going to, and now I'm going to press shift and I'm going to press my arrows and that will then jump eight bars like that I can also pick up my song position pointer or song locator and I can move that around the arrange freely and sometimes we want to create a cycle so that this cycles perhaps between a bar and the way to do that is to turn on cycle mode which is up here so I can just turn that on here the shortcut to turn that on and off is uh, C and if I want to just select a cycle for this loop I select the loop and I press U and I can see then that my cycle area is just that loop another way to go about that actually uh, is to set locators over here so select the loop set locators and then it creates a loop I'm going to start building up the song now and I have my loop so I'm going to go back into my loop browser by hitting O on the keyboard and I'm going to navigate to a bass, perhaps an electric bass and perhaps something that's groovy, groovy electric bass 05. I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to drag that in and we can see that although the original tempo is 110 or 100 beats per minute uh, we haven't imported tempo information so the project stayed at 88 beats per minute so now i have a one bar loop and a two bar a one bar drum loop and a two bar electric bass so i need to start then copying and pasting and creating a track from these two parts now i can do this a number of ways if i select the loop the good life beat and press option and click on the loop and hold you can see I get a plus sign and I can then drag the loop to the next bar and release and create a copy of it. If I don't press option and obviously that will just move that. The other way to go about that is to go, navigate to the top of the loop where you see this what's called loop pointer and we can click and hold and drag out copies of our loop like that and another way to do that is to go into the inspector window and just click on loop and that will then loop until the end of the project which is at bar 
129. I don't really want that loop going all the way to the end like that so I'm just going to turn that off and go back to my original way of doing things of just clicking option and dragging oh I had them both selected there so just click that and then I can pick up the two and then do it like that and then maybe I leave a gap pick up two you know slowly building up the a range like that I can of course if I just select this loop and zoom in, I can see, as I said, the individual hits. So I can start then perhaps editing parts of this out as well. I have, you can see here, I have two tools. I have a my, my left click tool and my right click tool, my command click tool. So if I hit command click, I can just select parts and I can mute them by, um, sorry, I can delete them by hitting backspace. Okay, didn't sound great, but you get the idea. You can start then creating. You start creating quite um, creative uh, arrangements just by editing and muting stuff out. And I can always go back into my loop menu and look for other sounds that might fit. Um, one thing that I like to do is when I find uh, a loop that I like, I can check this favorites box, and that then will hear that will that then will appear in my favorites window. So that's something that I quite like doing. So then I, you know, I've got a pool of loops that I quite like. not sure about that but that's part of the fun isn't it just dragging things in and trying to come up with um, sometimes ideas out of nothing and that's what I like about using Apple loops and just dragging things in and, and trying to make something out of nothing so just a little bit more about the command click tool um, as you can see I've got my my uh, mouse tool if you like as my left click tool and I can change that here if I wanted to so I can choose from any of these functions and um, my command click tool is currently set to the marquee tool but let's say I wanted some scissors I can select it from here uh, and every time then I click command I get my scissors tool so it's quite handy and when I release command I go back to my um, mouse click tool and uh, I can edit that way. Uh, if I hit uh, control and option at the same time I have a third tool which always stays the same and that's my zoom tool. So if I drag a box around that area I zoom in and interestingly if I then single click I go back to where I was. So I actually have three tools that I can use at any one time without having to go into the toolbox. I'm now starting slowly to build up the arrangement by dragging in different sounds and chopping them and editing them. And I don't know if I made this clear, but if you press T on the keyboard, you get your toolbox. And from here, then you can start cutting things up if you like and deleting things and um, using your eraser tool to erase things however you want to and slowly start to build up your arrange so if I wanted now to start mixing the song rather than just use these functions here I might want to go into my mix window which is X on the keyboard and just resize that and then here I can see my three tracks that I have I can uh, adjust the volume here and I can adjust the panning here to pan between left and right. This here is my main output and this is my master fader. So I can adjust the overall volume. Here. 
If I wanted to start renaming the tracks, that's easy enough, just by double clicking in the track header, and I can rename here accordingly. And also, if I wanted to start adding some track icons, some pictures, uh, which can be very, very useful when you start to build up quite a few tracks, I can click in the, I can control click, sorry, in the track header, and choose the appropriate icon so for loops I might want to choose a picture of a drum kit. If I now wanted to add some processing to this track so for example if I wanted to add something to the bass I go back into my mixer window and with the bass track here I've selected it so you can see I go up to um, my audio effects I click in that window and I get a list of all logics effects and processing. So if I go to amps and pedals, I might want to choose the bass amp designer and to try and change the tone of that bass to make it a little bit more interesting. I get my amp designer, which is this thing here. With the bass soloed, I can scroll between different tones. bypass that here and turn it back on to A and B the two the differences between the two sounds so that's uh, processing if I wanted to add some reverb I can also do that from here go down to reverb and select a reverb you can put reverb directly onto the track but I prefer much prefer to use uh, an auxiliary to do that where I send a copy of the track via a bus you can see that the auxiliary is created here with the input being bus 1 I send that over to um, the bus here and I just set that to zero by uh, clicking, by pressing option and clicking on it. Copy of the dry signal is sent down there and then I put my audio effect on my reverb or any time based effects I do it this way and send a copy of it over to there and blend the two sounds together. <laughs> Once you're happy with your track, you can create a stereo bounce. And to do that, we go to File, Bounce, Project or Section. And the shortcut being Command B. And we can see here that we can create a WAV file, Pulse Code Modulation, which is WAV file, File Format WAV, the resolution 16 bit and the sample rate 44.1, which is CD quality. Uh, we can also simultaneously create an MP3 or just an MP3 and we can also create an M4A and burn directly to CD or DVD. Now the start point is at bar 1 which is good but the end point is at bar 129 and our song is at the moment only 11 bars long so we're going to have a few bars of nothing. So we can adjust that here, um, or we can cancel the bounce window. We can select all by dragging a box, or of course going Command A and selecting all, and then going back into our bounce window, and that then will bounce just to the project end, which is bar 11. We can do this in real time, so it will take however long um, it takes to get from bar 1 to bar 11 in real time or we can do it offline which is a bit quicker um, you'll, you may you will lose quality if you do it offline but if you're just doing a rough demo then perhaps that's the best option but if you're doing a final master bounce final bounce of your mix then real time would be better 
uh, include audio tail. Well, that's in case we have um, a reverb that tails off at the end here. It will get included into that. And we'll talk more about bounce second cycle pass later. Normalize is set to off. Make sure that that's off. And if you then click bounce. So now if I click bounce, I'm going to create a WAV file, 44.116 bit of my 11 bars. I'm going to include the audio tail to my reverb unit, which is going to tail on a little bit after bar 11 and the normalizers off. Oh, and I'm going to add it back into project. So it's going to go back into my project folder, which, yeah, why not? So if I now press bounce, it's going to ask me um, where I want to save my bounce to. So it'll create a copy into my project folder, but I might want to save a copy onto my desktop. Remember that if we have another uh, folder selected and we want to go quickly or want to navigate quickly to the desktop, we press Command D. And uh, it's never good calling it output one and two. So we will call it delete me and we will save. That's now created uh, my a copy, a bounced copy of my track. And if I go, just want to check if I go into my project files. Um, I get there in the end. There should be a copy down here somewhere. Yes, there's a copy within the project folder down there. And there would also be a copy on my desktop. If I didn't have my icons hidden, I would see a copy here, which I could preview by clicking on it and pressing the space bar. And I could also double click and open that up in iTunes.